So we work with organizations where they're dealing with residents that just came off the streets or just came out of the hospital and are low on income. And we work with them as far as, okay, we'll give you a $200 credit. Come on in and shop at the store. Take as much as you can up to $200 worth because we want to help out. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. It's Rick Nusky here. I am your host. I have a big smile on my face today because I just think about the caliber of individuals that I have the opportunity to spend time with on the show and also uh, reading through all of your feedback. It's wonderful. It's warm. It's supportive. It also uh, just inspires me so much to bring you great guests and uh, today's guest is no different. I'm on the line with the wonderful Reed Husma. Welcome to the show, Reed. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It's yeah, good to be here. Absolutely. My pleasure. Now, just for context, Reid, I'm going to be sharing with our audience that uh, we're going to be talking about your organization, Gone for Good. We're going to talk about your business model, and we're going to be talking about the opportunities that exist in the junk removal industry. It doesn't sound like something that a lot of people would know much about. I wonder if we can uh, talk about that in some depth in a moment, but uh, I guess it's customary for us, Reid, to spend a few moments just learning a little bit about yourself and you know what led you up to getting involved in this industry. So um, where's home for you? Home is actually Denver, Colorado. Fantastic. Been there all your life? No, I was born and raised in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and uh, moved to Denver, Colorado to go to the University of Denver. Graduated uh, from the college with an international business degree with a minor in Spanish and you know, didn't want to go back to Albuquerque and, and <laughs> fell in love with Denver. <laughs> well, look, I, I know there's obviously some wonderful people there because I've been uh, just uh, perusing your website and I've seen some very smiling faces there with the team that works with you there. And I'd love to learn a little bit about, uh, you know, the model, that, the franchise model behind um, Gone for Good because it is a wonderful cause and it must be very difficult given the nature of the world that we live in. But um, before we do jump into that, Reid, when you were young, did uh, do you have any fond memories of uh, of growing up and maybe uh, your first entrepreneurial experience. Can you recall anything? Well, I, um, I always, always looked up to my dad and uh, he was an entrepreneur himself. He was in the paper industry. He right. sells um, the paper that you would get, your business cards, envelopes, all of that. Mm -hmm. And then partnered up with my uncle where they do the toilet paper, paper towels, the hotel industry, everything with that. So I was always looking forward to be my own boss, I guess, down the road. Yep. And I started that early on with um, mowing lawns. I was 12 years old and started mowing lawns and made great money. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, and it doesn't leave you, does it? You know, you get that entrepreneurial itch and you don't realize it at the time as a child or as a, a young man that, uh, hey, look, there's something inside of me that's very special. And um, I'd love to talk more about that in, in a moment. But um, when... Um, you, you talked about your father. Uh, I often talk about those who have given uh, direction and mentorship. Would he have been the only person in your life that's uh, crafted you and honed you to be the person you are today? Um, I would say actually uh, my father and then on my mom's side, uh, grandfather that um, was a big entrepreneur himself mm. uh, with the last name of Halligan. They were the manufacturers of a CB radio called Halicrafters, which yep. uh, have always in, inspired me to to continue on when times are tough. <laughs> and he would always tell me, you know, times are going to get tough, but move on. And as being an entrepreneur, there's always been great consultants. Um, I've dealt with Rick Grossman of the franchise Bible, has taught me many of things. Of course, yes. Very well known. Yeah, all over the place. It's been it's been a great. Uh, I always keep my ears open. Yeah. Mothers. Well, thank you for sharing. I do appreciate it. And uh, I wonder what your thoughts are on uh, on ongoing education, because we have a lot of startup entrepreneurs and those who are about to walk the path that you've spent the last 12 or so years walking uh, with Gone for Good. So it's not exactly an overnight success. What do you what do you say to people about education? Education is key. Um, mm. it, when you first get into it, it's, you think it's just going to take off. You think you have a great idea, mm. and you do have a great idea, 
but it's getting the word out there and reaching out to people is is key to success and networking as much as you can i even started going door to door in my neighborhood just to let people know that i was starting a business so it's tough yeah but you get through it and and that tells me a lot about your drive and i think having that motivation and having a vision and i guess a dream for you is was that important very important it was very um when we first started it i just i put all into it i lived out of the warehouse for a while did all sorts of stuff and was just doing everything i could to get this business going because i felt it was a, and a great cause and being i guess an entrepreneur and owning your own company you just put all your your sweat and tears into it oh yeah of course now uh given that uh you know time has passed hopefully things have settled a little bit more and you've got a little more time available to you i'd love to learn a little bit uh about i guess uh your um hobbies and things like that do you enjoy sports what's your thing when you have a bit of free time when i have a bit of free time it is golf i, I love to play golf <laughs> i used to do a lot of skiing um uh, water but, skiing uh, or snow skis? skiing Oh, uh, snow skiing, yes, right. up yep. in the, the Rocky Mountains. Fantastic. Now, tell me, are you any good at golf? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll definitely play against you then because I'm pretty much the same way. <laughs> oh, good. We'll have a good time. <laughs> Absolutely. We're sure and certain. Now, um, what was the genesis for um, Gone for Good? Because it, it is a fascinating topic, and I've, I've spent a lot of time perusing on this one because I was very interested. It's interesting how I um, was reading books, getting the education on starting a business, and around mm. that time was about kind of the recycle movement. It was starting to pick up. And I started out looking at my basement going, I have so much stuff in my basement. What do I do with all of it? And from that, the project started of getting rid of stuff and finding a second home. Because there's so many ways to call, whether you're calling a charity, uh, electronic recycling place, but it was getting involved of hiring someone to get out of your house. There wasn't really a one-stop solution. Yeah, and that's where God for Good was created. Yeah, thank you. I um, I, in all of this, we have a, an audience who are hungry for knowledge and and guidance, essentially. And I wonder, you've had to take some pretty significant chances and and expose yourself to risks of various natures. Um, what do you say about that when people are, I guess, fearful of of taking a chance and 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 uh, concerned about failure, for example? Yeah, that's the, the difficult part. You have friends and family that tell you this is this is not the right thing. Go back to your to your normal job. Go back to getting paid well. I was in the hardware and software industry selling um, little discs, making lots of money. Mm. And um, they go, you know, you're going to have a family. You got to support them. But you really, honestly, if you feel that you have the right idea and the right business and you really care about it, it's going to work out for you. Even with the tough times, the phone's not ringing eventually it will because you're trying that hard you're giving it 24 7. 12 years later you know things must have uh, gone fairly well for you I, I wonder what are the opportunities that uh, are in your industry that other people could find what uh, i'm sorry what are other what are the opportunities in terms of uh, getting involved with a business like yours are there uh, franchise opportunities um oh can yes anybody yes. get involved uh, in we started, your business yeah we started franchising about three years ago mm -hmm. uh, we currently have one in aurora and we have one in seattle just came back from seattle what a beautiful city that is and Interesting. Um, yeah, we're, we're starting to sell franchises we're getting more on the technology of of how to train and and do all that and it's um it's an exciting adventure i would tell you that because the systems are obviously very important have you had to develop your own systems before um, rolling out a franchise model yes yes we have i mean it's a different type of model and to train people on this model you need to have everything up lined up um literature videos we spent hours and hours of time doing videos mm -hmm. uh, it's the combination of junk removal and a thrift store so it, it, not just your typical junk removal company. no because uh, I, again I've been reading through your literature and it's fascinating and I, I'd love if you could share the difference between gone for good and some and a typical I guess junk removalist what they would do versus what you would do would you mind sharing I don't mind at all um, so 
the diff- the main difference is that we have a box truck. It's a 16 foot box truck. You see a lot of junk removal companies that have more of the dumpster truck. Hmm. And with the box truck, you're actually moving the items from the house into a warehouse, which is the thrift store, and where you sort out stuff and you either resell it or recycle it or work with several charities to find that stuff for second home. So a lot of the other junk removal companies, they may recycle, they may donate, but they're not really taking it back to the warehouse. Yeah, absolutely. Now, do you find any, um, I guess, barriers to success in different jurisdictions, different locations? And um, what are your plans to, I guess, work around those things? Not really. Um, You know, what uh, we've just, when we first started, we were working with, you know, trying to get leads and it was it's so competitive with mm. uh, trying to just get a sofa or stuff like that, and we found our niche is mostly in the estate cleanouts, as that's where our jobs are at, and not dealing with um, doing the small pickups. Got it. Yeah, I, I wonder. Um, you know, there's at least where I'm living, there's a, a, a I guess somewhat of a society who love going thrift shopping. Well, do you do you see people doing that a lot? We do. We do. We thought we'd see a decline during the uh, pandemic, and mm. we did not. I mean, people, we put our masks on, put our gloves on, and people are still coming in. It's it's funny. If we ever have time and you're in the Denver area, it's the most unorganized thrift store around. But people <laughs> actually love it. They yeah. love it. <laughs> yeah, well, I love the, uh, you know, grassroots approach. And uh, disorganization is sometimes very attractive. That's for sure uncertain. I love it when I go and have a look at a, a thrift store for sure. And uh, uh, do you have any plans on, on opening other stores or just the one at the moment? We do. We currently open up one in North Colorado. Um, we'd love to get more into Colorado Springs and, um you know, expanding the corporate, but we're always welcoming people that uh, are looking into the franchise. It really is a model for an, a person to own the business and be involved in it and uh, to make it grow. I'm always interested in, in you, and I, and I think to myself, what is some of the, the absolute treasure that you have stumbled across along the way? And you know, it's... Uh, it's interesting. We'll have a good story probably about every year. And it always happens around the end of the year when it saves and helps when we become slow on our hauling side and we depend more on our thrift side. And just one time it was just absolutely crazy. We were in a basement and it was a folded up box. To make a long story short, the box had the uniform, or I would say the outfit for the singer Prince. Oh, wow. And that outfit alone sold for $12,000. No way. Yeah. That is amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Fun stuff. To me, you you appear to be a philanthropist um, at heart. Now, um, you've got this wonderful business. Now, what are some of the the businesses and organizations that you're helping? Are are you able to share anything of that side of the business? Oh, of course. Uh, So we work with uh, several charities, um, the Veterans, the, uh, the Coalition for the Homeless, many organizations where they're dealing with their clients or their residents that just came off the streets or just came out of the hospital and are low on income. And we work with them as far as, okay, we'll give you a $200 credit. Come on in and shop at the store. Take as much as you can up to $200 worth. Yep. And it's all yours because we want to help out. Yeah, and I can imagine um, just some of the, the, I guess, the pleasure that you get to, uh, of seeing smiling faces of those you've helped. Um, it's just a wonderful thing, and it must get you up in the morning. Now, um, speaking about, you know, that motivation of getting up in the morning, um, just to help educate our guests, uh, our listeners again, when you have those days um, that you don't feel like getting out of bed and things are not going great, what do you say to an entrepreneur that's going through those uh, similar experiences to help them get through? I think I've always remembered that um, your competition is getting up. And if you don't want to get up, then your business is going to slide. And do you want it to slide? Probably not. So that gets you going. If you're having a rough morning or if you even feel a little sick or something's going on or you're tired, we're all tired. But you, you look out the window, people are driving in. 
even when there's snow, people are still driving. I don't want to drive in the snow, but you have to. <laughs> uh, we see a lot of, uh, you know, junk across the world. Do you, do you see uh, more of it occurring um, as we become more socially aware and responsible? Or do you think we're not becoming responsible? What's your, what's your take on that? So um, what we see, you know, I, I do see more, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Um, with a lot of online purchasing. Mm-hmm. And I, I hope to see more of that recycling happening, maybe with uh, Amazon recycling cardboard or it's just you see a lot of new stuff and you just it, it continues to grow. And hopefully education and more people learning about what's happening in this world as far as so much stuff. Do we need all that stuff? Um, let's handle it better ways than we are today. There's certainly a lot of stuff out there. That's a really good way to, I guess, couch it. And I, yeah. I, I think to myself, um, if I was uh, in your, your area and I wanted to help, what's the best thing I can do instead of just um, loading my stuff into a, a skip and throwing it away into landfill? What, what can I do? It's, it's all about... Um, getting on the internet and saying, how do I recycle this? I mean, we still do that every day. We run into items and we go, where can I take this? And then when people call up and go, well, I just want to know where I can take it. We're more than happy to, to tell you like, okay, you can take your electronics here. You can take your cardboard here. There's a drop off location here. It's just looking it up rather than just, you know, saving time and just throwing it away. And even I have to get on with my employees as mm -hmm. far as, we're not recycling right. You can't throw plastic bags into the recycle bin. Yeah, absolutely. It's education. Yeah, of course, of course. Now, in terms of, uh, you know, you, how long has it been? 12 years since you founded this organization? Yes. And, uh, you know, um, we often talk about overnight successes and uh, certainly 12 years is um, a bit of a journey. Um, mm -hmm. What can you say um, that's changed for um, your business from the moment that you opened it to, to where you are today? What's changed? Anything? A lot of it has changed. It kind of, um, we really didn't know at the beginning where we were going with it as we mm. thought it would be spring cleaning. And, you know, you just have to roll on where the business takes you. We, I had no idea that working with professional organizers or dealing with real estate agents and, and building relationships is really the way to go. Um, you know, at first, we threw lots of money at um, directories and Google ads and all this stuff. And it, we'd get a couple phone calls, but mm -hmm. your business is going to die that way. You have to get out there and get on the phone and connect with people. And it comes down to uh, business relationships that turn into friend relationships and it keeps people Networks. loyal and your business grows. So in terms of increasing your footprint, um, you're obviously on a sort of outward circumference, presumably. Um, where are you looking to um, operate next? We'd love to operate in Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. um, We've also looked at the state of Texas. And even though I said I don't want to go back to Albuquerque, I think Albuquerque <laughs> is a great city. And I'd love to start a, a gone for good down there. Of course, of course. Now, I've uh, been uh, looking over your book, uh, Cleaning Out Grandma. I'm fascinated by this. Can you, uh, can you share uh, how this came about and where, this, where the name for this book came from for, for a start? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when, we, when I started out franchising, I knew that I couldn't just, you know, get a lawyer and do the documentation, I had to do it the right way. I wanted yep. to make it, make sure that the franchisees were taken care of. And with the franchise consultant of Rick Grossman and, and some of the film editors like Kevin Campbell, um, they helped me with that book. They said, you need to be an expert in the industry. You need to show that you have knowledge on this industry. And uh, we just came out with, you know, who's your customer? And I said, well, our biggest customers are grandma and grandpa that have all this stuff, but now are moving into assistant living and they got to get their stuff out of that basement, out of that attic. And um, so that's how that book came about and just sharing some knowledge out there. So how long did it take to, to write that with help? Was that a short thing? How long is it? Is it a, a long read? No, it's a, it's a short book. It, I mean, it, it's because uh, it took us 
my wife and I actually wrote the book together. She did most of the writing because I'm not very good at writing. <laughs> I just sat down and had the idea. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> so it's a short read because I think we had big font on the book. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. That's the way I would have done it too. <laughs> yeah. Now I've been uh, I'm going through your website, loving uh, reading the reviews as well, and uh, I think that's a very important part. Um, what what part does social um, proof play in your business? Oh, on the uh, social media. Yeah, like uh, you know the interaction with previous people that you've served, and you know getting their feedback and uh, having reviews and that sort of thing. It's very important. I mean, that's. Uh when people are, are taking a look on if they're going to hire us or a, a different junk removal company, and I do it the same when I'm shopping around, is, is, is social reviews. It's, it's Yelp, it's Google, it's all those reviews, and it's important to keep that reputation going and to react to the bad ones that you get. You'll get bad ones in the thrift store. You'll get bad ones on a hallway. Mm -hmm. and it's but, important uh, to communicate with all of them. There's opportunities in those ones too, oftentimes, isn't there? Yes, sir, Rick, you are correct. Yes, absolutely. Now, I'm, I'm interested in learning more about your team because, again, uh, I've uh, seen their smiling faces and, uh, you know, they've obviously been attracted to your organization for a reason. Tell us a little bit about your culture uh, in your business. You know, um, when we interview, we ask them, did you look at the website? Do you care about recycling? And, and those questions come about. And when they have that that strive or that, um, how do you say the, they're not just doing it for the paycheck. It's you not you a, see not those just employees that are just there from eight to five. Yep, got it. And then if you see the employees that are sticking around a little bit to make sure things are taken care of or they get excited about giving furniture to someone that just started out brand new, Yep. those are the employees you want to make sure you take good care of. And, and, uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, and it just led me to the thought, um, my own intuition uh, has got me to ask you about intuition. Does that play a part when you're making selections? And are you the only person that uh, makes this uh, choice when hiring? Yes, intuition, yes. It, uh, well, and then it's passed down to the operations manager. It's your team. Let's you know, have a good team together. You're doing the hiring. And, you know, We've made mistakes. Yeah, of course, we all do. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I like about this sort of uh, call because we do get to the nuts and bolts of a business. So it really helps those who are interested in becoming a franchise um, E. <laughs> I always yeah. get confused with that franchise or franchise E. It's one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, in terms of uh, your own structure in t uh, with the people that you have, you've, you've talked about having an operations manager. Is the, is the structure for your franchise model is it rigid? Does it, do they have to have the same amount of people or how does that work? No, I mean, they can have the, the model works as far as if um, they want to be involved with it or they mm. want to hire someone that's the operations manager that's at the store and, you know, sorting through recycle and reselling, posting on Craigslist and then yep. having two movers out there bringing the stuff in. So there's different types of models on how they they would like to run the franchise. Well, that's excellent to know that there's that bit of flexibility there. Now, I'm looking at uh, your website and I noticed um, your list of services. Um, would the, the list of services generally be the same for a franchise, um, eh? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It's, uh, it's the combo of, um, of junk hauling and thrift store. So it's, it, they can't buy just the thrift store part. They need to also do the junk hauling. Because there's so many people that love the thrift store and be like, oh, I could do this store. I'm like, well, you actually have to go get the stuff too. Yeah, well, let's uh, talk a little bit about that if you don't mind, Reid. Um, sure. uh, because, you know, I'm, I'm thinking I know a little bit about it, but um, there's obviously more than just pickup. There's the store itself. Talk us through the, the, the experience. Of the, of the store itself? I oh, know of the entire franchise model for somebody who's on this call, they're, gonna, they're, they're listening going, I really am interested in this, I want to know more. So you've obviously got the pickup, um, you've got the relationship building, you've got the thrift store, um, you, you would obviously have the admin side. Um, maybe if we could talk a bit about all of those things combined. Yeah, it's um, the combination of all of it is, is working part as... Um, is the, is the junk hauling side, is building, yep. finding that first, and then yep. also working the thrift store side. Yeah. 
the whole model is that uh, you know when one's not doing well, you work on the thrift store side. So it's uh, yeah, I get it. Now, is that something that you would help them start up with um, as they start? You know, they might not have any experience in this field. I guess my question oh. is, what type of person would be best suited for this particular model? I guess the best person or any type of person is that they want to get involved in this type of model. And we can either train them on it, uh, where we have several videos on it. And we also have a, when they buy a franchise, there's a, a package that comes with it is the the marketing side that we're, we already know how to find the people you want to connect with is we have a call center calling on all those leads. And then during that time, as we're building the business for them, we start training them on operating the business. So it's not where, hey, great, you got the website, you got the the name, now good luck. That's yeah. not it. That's not <laughs> uh, it. We're here to help. We're here yeah, to get absolutely. You the, the business. And that's what I love about this model and uh, the, the whole franchise approach is because you won't be left alone. And that's oftentimes a big fear factor for people, isn't it? Yes, it is. I mean, it, it, at first you think of it like buying a franchise that, well, great, I get the name. And then all of a sudden I you know, paid all this money and now I, don't, I hear crickets. And that, you can't do that to the franchises. It's not... It's not good for anybody. It's not, it's not good no. for the franchise or other franchises. No. You got to grow together. So, how many? Um, how, how long has it been since you've rolled out the actual franchise component of uh, Gone for Good? I, I think it's been about three years now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we first started out. Actually, David Commit that worked for me for eight years was uh, was very committed to the business, and he was he jumped on it. He wanted to buy a franchise, start in Aurora, and He's doing very well out there in Aurora. Excellent. And then uh, another one out in Seattle. Yep. You always want to hear about these success stories because, you know, that gains that momentum and that's what we're all about here on the My Future Business Show is to um, show um, people who might be interested in the franchise model that Gone for Good is certainly something you need to uh, consider um, before making any decisions. Now, I'd love to... Um, further educate them we're all about the education as well in terms of the benefits of owning a franchise what are they i guess the benefits of owning a franchise is that again that uh you you're not by yourself you're with a, a team and you're with the model that works you you know that a model has been working for 13 years and you know it can be scary where you see a lot of, of junk removal companies out there I mean, how can I enter this this industry when it's so saturated? Well, yeah. that's why you get into a franchise. They kind of have the secret sauce behind that on, on making the industry work and making a profit out. I, I'm looking at the site here now. And it talks about uh, the investment info. What would you suggest that people do if they want to um, learn more about the numbers behind a business? Because there obviously is some numbers that are very important for people to know about. Oh, so when you look at the numbers as far as, you know, there's the franchise fee, there's the mm -hmm. truck, there's warehouse, that, it's very important to kind of research all that before you dive into something as buying a franchise. Because that, that can be where we help out, but if you're in a different state or in a different city, you know more than we do as far as what it costs to rent a warehouse or what the leasing is out there in that type of area. Fantastic. Now, what uh, I guess it, there'd be an application process behind um, coming on board as a franchisee. Uh, t talk us through the application process that it itself and the conversations that you would have. So we first start out with uh, information. They go onto the website um, mm -hmm. at goneforgoodstore.com and select franchise. And they fill out the information. And what is first sent to a potential franchisee is an interactive kind of almost start from our training video, but it shows you all the advantages and talks about, is it a good fit? Cause it is maybe not, might not be maybe a good not. fit, but it gives you a little bit of education. You answer questions and, and then uh, the next step is getting into that long FDD, seeing you know, all the, <laughs> <laughs> all the so, text that's involved with that of course do you do you have uh, like an online training portal as such 
We do. We do. So we do have a, once a franchisee starts growing their business, we have an, an online uh, training with videos and where they answer questions and it goes on the, the junk removal side and also the uh, thrift store side. And, and, you know, it's very, uh, I guess it would be a challenge to work out territory space. Um, how do you allocate different territories for those uh, when the franchisees uh, maybe are on boundaries? How does that work? That, Rick, is, is a great question because that was my question when I first started doing <laughs> uh, franchises. Yeah. Is because, you know, as we build those relationships, if I have a real estate agent that is about 30 miles away from me but has a great project for me, does that mean it goes to the other franchise? No. Uh, it's it comes down to the territory around the thrift store. So it's right. about 350,000 population around the thrift store. Don't advertise in that area. Uh -huh. But if you're building relationships around the city, that is your, your job. Your, your area, absolutely. And area. This, is, yes. this is probably one of the, you know, book of questions that you would be receiving about this. So um, if people do want to uh, contact you, Reid, because we've really only touched the surface of this in, uh, incredibly exciting opportunity. Um, aside from your website, are you available on any other social platforms where people can contact you? Um... We're building one, actually. <laughs> right. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, it's just a website or uh, my email address anytime. Uh, we collect. Uh, it's an easy one. I'll just do it. The info at goneforgoodstore.com. It's an easy I, one. To write. I like the easy ones to remember. So uh, if you're on this call today and you're interested in Gone For Good Store, um, becoming a franchisee and you want to learn more because there certainly will be a lot of questions that you would like to get answered, make sure you do your due diligence. Uh, it's hard to say that <laughs> before yeah. you jump in and sign on the dotted line because at the end of the day, you need to make sure this is right for you. And I know that Reed and his team will do the right thing by you. And um, again, that website is goneforgoodstore.com. And with all that being said, Ted Reed, thank you so very much for joining me on the My Future Business Show today. Rick, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.